Vanik, Vanik, you can share your screen. Yes. OK, let Maybe. me. You see it? Do you see the screen? One second. Something uh, not here. Yeah, not here. OK. Uh, select the thing here. I'm just ready. 3D print web key and allow. Now you should see it, huh? You see, you see the yeah. screen? You see it? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, a new start this year. We have now uh, 2024. The first month is nearly over. And uh, we had a fantastic start in our dental laboratory. Uh, it really uh, was a good start this year. Usually the first uh, two weeks are extremely slow. But this year it just continued like last year. So I think it's going to be a fantastic year in the dental uh, laboratory business. Um, to give you a few information, the presentation today, you know, I call it a game change in 3D printing. But before I do the main presentation, I want to introduce a little bit, uh, you know, introduce to 3D printing so you understand the basics. Many of you are maybe already doing 3D printing and this and this, but that you understand a little bit the basics, where I started, how I started before I go to in the into the game changer. And uh, it's really, uh, it's, it's an interesting phase. I was one of the first ones uh, doing 3D printing in the dental field, like also like the CAT CAM, you know, for the dental library was developed here with me and with four other labs here in Switzerland nearly 35 years ago. People don't know that. It started here in this uh, room where we are sitting here now, which is now a high-tech uh, printing room. Um, okay, so let's get to uh, start uh, intro to 3D printing. You know, when I started 3D printing many, many, many years ago, uh, the way was, it was very, very difficult. Uh, you know, there was a lot of rocks in front of me, you know, I had to find solutions. It was not easy. I had a lots of questions, had to understand, uh, I had to do brainstorming. And then when you had problems, you had to like ants, you had to find a solution to build a bridge, you know, from one stone to the other to get over. So this was like the start of 3D printing. The we in the laboratory, that was my passion at that time. But many years ago, we built our first printer here. Like you see this one, this 3D printer uh, was a projector. You maybe see that a standard projector. We still have this projector. We don't use the printer anymore, but we still use the projector for lecturing. And this was our first printer. Me and Tom in the laboratory, we built together. And uh, this was uh, over 10 years ago. The printer worked, but the results were uh, crap. You know, they, you couldn't use them, but I got to learn how to use it, okay? So that was 10 years ago. And nowadays, you know, 3D printing uh, is everywhere in everybody's mouth. You know, everybody's talking about 3D printing and uh, uh, every company is trying to jump on it. And they're saying so many things and you have to be so careful out there that you don't make too many mistakes, that you don't make the wrong choices, that you don't fall into many of those uh, pit holes, like, like I was showing in the beginning, you know, you're walking on a, on a thing and you fall into a hole. That's, I don't want that to happen to you. So th that was the idea that first I will show you the different systems that you understand the problematic and uh, before we go into the game changer. So basically what we can say, all 3D printers are working. Yes, but do we want to use them in a dental laboratory or do you want to use them at your home for doing some hobby work, okay? So we have to be kind of differentiate for what we want to use it. Uh, in the printing, printing world, 3D possibilities are huge. You know, we can print as so many different things. We can print temps, we can print models, implant drilling guides. You can print casting for, uh, for pressing or for casting. Uh, you can print custom trays, uh, orthodontic apply positioning splints, dentures, uh, uh, Michigan trays, uh, you can print uh, models for splints. Uh, you know, people are saying, you, know, you can also print the splints. Don't believe all that, you know, you can, like you can print aligners. Don't believe all that, okay? But what we can say is many of these things can work. You know, many of things you see can work. Some of you are doing it, but they're also creating a lot of problems because the materials are not 100% there where we need it. Uh, like, you know, Michigan splints, which we did. Uh, out of 100, 98 broke after two years in patient's mouth. So we have stopped doing them. We mill them now, okay? Because the materials are too brittle for that. So 
So whatever the company say, you don't believe everything. You have to get learn your own experience. But why is this happening? Why is this possibility is happening to 3D printing? Why are we getting into 3D printing? It's very simple because of the intral scanners. Okay, there's so many intral scanners on the market, and we get data from all kind of scanners. And I don't want to say this scanner is good or this one is bad or whatever. It doesn't matter. We as a lab, we get the scans, and then we have to somehow uh, create a digital case. And that's why we need to print, okay? So the scanners are the producers of our 3D work. And you will see this exploding everywhere. 3D printed work is uh, really going up and up and up. Majority of the work which we do 3D printed, I would say 90% of 3D printed cases are models, all kind of models, you know, from implant models to uh, just any models we used to do as plaster models in the past, because the intral scanners are nothing else than a standard impression tray. So before we had impression tray for uh, for alginates or whatever, and you used to pour them, now we print them, okay? So the next thing is basically printers. What kind of a printer should I go for? Okay, we have different types of printer. We have laser printers, we have LCD printers, then we have DLP printers, okay? And the question is, which printer type uh, should I use? Uh, which printer type will be the right for me? And this is something where it's very, very important to understand because all these systems work. But to give you an idea how these printers really work, then you will understand the problematic of these printers. So let's have a look at the technology first, you know, of these. How does 3D printing work? First of all, you have a light source down here. The light source can be a projector. The light source can be naturally an LCD, like your iPhone, you know, you have an LCD screen, which is projecting the light, or you can even have a laser, which laser is projecting the light, okay? So at the end of the day, technology with all three are same. You have a light source from underneath. Then the light goes up into a bath here where there's a liquid resin. So in here is liquid resin and here is the film. So the resin doesn't stick to this film. Some companies have a silicon underneath here, some have a film. And this is the platform where the object adheres. So what happens first, the object goes down, there's a layer of liquid which stays inside underneath that, op that, that uh, platform, the projector goes on and projects your first element onto that platform. Then the platform the light goes off after two, three seconds, and then the pro platform goes up, comes down again, maybe 20 or 30 microns less, light comes on, projects the next thing. The time here of this light projecting onto your object is basically the, the time, how long it takes to harden the liquid. So if you're taking longer time, that means your model is going to be bigger. If you're taking short time, it's going to be smaller. So it's finding the right time and the companies prepare this for their resins. They put the recipe into the printer, which says, okay, cure it for two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, each layer, depends what accuracy they want. So this is the way basically printing works, you know, from underneath the light comes on, platform goes down, light comes on like that. Huh? So this is the technology which we are using in 95% of the cases. The SLA printer, these are printers which are, have a laser. And what does the laser do basically? It does basically the same thing. It projects the object in lines onto that surface. To, to give you an idea, on the left is a laser printer, on the right is a DLP, and they're printing the same object. Now you will see the laser printer has to follow basically, uh, you know, every part, it goes just you know, step by step. You see every part on the right-hand side is just one boom, one picture. The left, it has to, basically the same what it's doing on the right. And this means that the laser printer is going to take a long, long time. That's why, you know, laser printers, form lab, you know, can take three, four hours, five hours to print a model. This has to project subject. When you look at the laser, you can see the laser is very powerful in the middle and on the side it's getting softer. That's why I find them not so active. Over project a little bit, okay? So that's why I always recommend to use uh, a, a LCD or DLP printer. Now, 
if you compare these systems, the LCD printer, you know, 3D. That means it's like an iPhone, you see the object and it projects it on there. Since they are not so powerful, these, these LEDs, that means they are much slower because it takes a little longer time to cure this, uh, this resin. A DLP projector, DLP stands for digital light uh, processing. This is a projector which has got very much power and it projects the object. So you are naturally much more faster in projecting uh, something onto the surface, okay? Uh, that's why they are so much faster, okay? So for me, the LCD printer is very good for home use, you know, using at home or you want to sell a cheap projector, uh, you know, a sell a cheap printer, that's fine. But the problem with the LCD printers are the LCD panel loses power after, you know, maybe 100 prints or something like that. And then you have to replace them. The problem is you don't know when you have to replace them. Because what happens is your object gets maybe smaller and smaller and smaller. Your crowns will maybe not be fitting. Your implants model will not be fitting. And this is the problem. You always have to maybe uh, uh, cure a small uh, calibration body when you print something. So that's why I don't recommend to use LCD printers in the dental field. I don't think they're the right printers in the dental field. But, you know, to start, it's okay. Many people start with them. We also have two here, which we, you know, we were trying. We don't use them anymore because uh, it's too dangerous for us knowing when we have to change the LCD printer, uh, the LCD uh, panel. Uh, they're not expensive, but when to exchange them, okay? And most of the resins, for LCD printer are a little bit different than for DLP printers because they want them to react a little bit faster. So, you know, it says down here projection is very often replaced on an LCD printer, on a DL print, DLP printer, you know, only after a few, few years, okay? So that's why uh, the DLP printers are very, very accurate. If you want to use like a DLP printer now, you know, on a small laboratory, uh, we have been using the CPD-100. This is an excellent choice for small laboratory, for small prints. And here you can print most of the materials, you know, from tray materials to splint materials to uh, temporary materials to castable materials. That can be done on a small uh, printer, a DLP printer like this. Like I said, I don't like the LCD printers uh, anymore. I started with some of them, but I'm not happy. What is most important criteria when you're buying a 3D printer? That's what I say is the light source. Is it a DLP, LCD? Uh, or a laser. Then the software for print preparation is very, very, very important. For me, something of the most important things is open systems, you know, uh, because if I don't have an open system, you are in trouble because the companies can sell you the resin whatever price they want, okay? Like, for example, one of our uh, labs which we own, before we bought that lab, they have two uh, printers from next end. It is so expensive to use the next end printers. They're reliable because the resins are so expensive. You can't put any other resin in there. Okay. Uh, and that's why I would say, you know, be careful with closed systems. You want to be able to modify uh, your resins. Follow up cost has to be uncontrollable. That doesn't get too expensive. And I'll come to those points when, when it comes to the game changer. The time factor during printing is very. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, can you uh, uh, mute your sound in the background? People who are talking in the background because other people want to hear the lecture. Some people are talking in the background. Can you mute your microphones? Okay. Time factor during printing, support hotline. If you have problems, who you can call. Build platform size, how big can I build? And the accuracy should be minimum or I would say maximum 50 microns. And training, 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 courses, courses, courses. I do a lot of 3D printing training. It's like a one day course. And after that, people are all specialists when they leave those trainings, okay? The next thing is, let me go to the next thing. Let's have a look at the materials. Here you have to be very careful, okay? In Europe, uh, most of the materials uh, which we use are from Dentona. Uh, we also use all the iodide materials, but be careful. You can buy on Alibaba, on AliExpress, very, very, very cheap materials and they work. But, you know, most of you, I don't think you really want to, I think most of you want to live a longer life because many of them are, I think, very, very, not very good for your health. 
They smell very strong, many of these liquids. They have a lots of free monomers. The reason why they are a problem is because they are so thin in their consistency that you can print them very good with the LCD printer. DLP printers, you can print a little more thicker resins, which you don't smell so strong, okay? So be careful on those cheap, cheap, cheap uh, materials because they are very bad for your health. I can guarantee you that, okay? Thicker resins are more difficult to print. The advantage is they don't smell and they are more accurate. Thinner resins, they, are, they produce harmful vapors for your health. It's a big health issue. People are not talking about this, but let me tell you in a few years, you know, I don't know how many people are going to get cancer from uh, all these uh, monomers which are in the air. It's going to be a problem. 3D printing, the effects of some of these resins, you know, because they are so thin, you get skin irritation, uh, respiratory irritations, eye contact, be very careful. They don't go in eye. eye. Toxicity, post-processing chemicals, uh, photoreactive uh, liquids. Uh, how do you get rid of the waste, you know, and uh, health effects? I just want to warn, don't buy the cheapest 3D materials, model materials. Buy something from a company which has got a good, good, good reputation. Otherwise, uh, you will be sooner or later in problems. Then on the 3D printing software, it depends what kind of a printer you use. Uh, one of the uh, best softwares, you can get a free version of this or you can get the pro version of this, is G2Box. G2Box is, you can download this. Um, GT Box has one big advantage. It's got also function of repairing models, repairing holes in the models, punching holes in the models. The pro version, you can even put uh, numbers, names, you can write something on your object, you can even cut your object. So the, the GT Box is actually an excellent software. And it's free, or you can buy the commercial version. I think it's $100 a year you pay for that. How does 3D printing work? You have your models, you place your models, and the software will slice your mods like a cucumber. It slices and slices, and it depends what kind of uh, slice you want. If you want 30 microns, then it'll cut it in 30 micron slices. And then these slices basically gets projected. So you see the model standing here, and these are from underneath. Each of them is one slice. P1 is one slice, P2, you know, like three, four, five. So they are 30 micron slices. The finer the slices, the more pictures you get. So if somebody says we can print very fast, you always have to ask, are you printing with 100 microns, 200 microns, 50 microns, 20 microns? The finer the surface, that means basically you have more pictures, so it has to project every two seconds more, longer, okay? For us, 50 microns is uh, perfect for models. Actually, uh, 100 microns is good already for models, but 50 microns, the surface is very smooth. But for our aligners, we be uh, aligner mods, we always print with 100 uh, microns because it has nothing to do with accuracy, it's just the optics with those fine lines, okay? That means 25 microns, you can see very fine lines, 50 microns, you can see a little bit more rougher lines, and 100 microns, the lines are, you know, very, very big, okay? So the software cheetah box, if you have any mistake in your STL file, basically you can hit the uh, repair button and then it will repair any of these holes. It'll fix the problem so you don't get too many misprints because this can always happen on 3D printing. It's like a Swiss cheese. You know, you can have holes in your STL files. The, the STL mesh is not perfect. And the, with the, basically with, uh, the, with, if you have a good software in your 3D printer, it can fix these issues so your STL file is not corrupt and is not print. And the, the post-processing is very, very interesting. You know, we basically use isopropyl alcohol and then we clean it, we put it in ultrasonic and basically go through the steps. And then post-processing, I don't recommend, recommend these light ovens that you see on the left-hand side from Shoy. They're not strong enough, okay? Uh, they're not good. You know, get something like uh, a powerful, like, uh, you know, we have now also one from iDite, just, uh, just got it. Uh, and But we use also uh, what you call uh, uh, nitrogen with our uh, printing materials to get even a smoother surface. So some people buy these washing machines and uh, we bought this one here from Anycubic. It's fantastic for home. 
you know, you can print one object and you can clean it and it cures it and oh, it's, it's a nice home. But here where we print, uh, you know, over a thousand models, uh, you know, it's like a month. Uh, we, I think nearly 2,000 now. It's like we don't have time to put in this washing machine. Uh, so be careful. The companies are trying to sell you washing machines and on and on and on. Yes, if you're a one-man lab and you only do one model a day, then the washing machine is good. But otherwise, forget it. It's just too much time consuming. It's too much cleaning involved. It is all, uh, it's all marketing. It, uh, people make you believe it's, it's a fantastic thing. We have it standing here, this one, and nobody uses it anymore, okay? Same uh, we have from uh, another company which have, has a washing machine from the dental field. We don't use them anymore because it's just too much time consuming. Model printing is the thing which we print the most. Something which comes, which is uh, a real mess in the dental practice or in dental laboratory. And you put your resin in day one, it looks like that. If you let it stand, day six, you see how the, the liquid has separated. That means after one or two days, you always have to filter out your liquid. So between prints, you know, if you have to wait some time, you have to go through a filter, you have to put it back in the model, and then you have to basically, you know, clean your tray. This is always uh, time consuming and it's always a pain. It's always, you know, it's, it's just time consuming, okay? Like you see here, cleaning, 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 uh, all okay. this. So that's why I, you know, it's okay if you got used to it. And we also, I hate this, okay, I don't like doing this, it's sticky, it's dirty, it's messy, and I wish we would have something else, and I'll show you something else afterwards. Then, you know, misprints, people having misprints, and they don't know why it's happening, you know, I, I hate this uh, uh, when these kind of things happen. But it's 99% our fault when we have misprints. And then you have, you know, the, the vat, that's the foil underneath, will maybe get a small puncture, gets a hole into it, and the liquid runs out of it. Some of these uh, tanks, they're made out of plastic. They're very, very expensive, and you have to buy them, you know, like from next then. I think they're about seven, eight hundred dollars each, each tank. Uh, and you don't know how long they're going to last. You know, somebody says, oh, they last uh, over a thousand prints. Don't believe that, because if something breaks during the printing, some piece falls off, it'll puncture it after, you know, two prints so you don't know really when when you have to change it so be careful don't trust everything what the company say you know and something also be careful you know some of the resins very cheap resins when you put them after printing on a flat uh, table after like one day you see they start to curve that's why i made this uh, part here to check you know from thin to thick if it if it warps and it really warps okay and same thing here, what we have been finding on LCD printers and DLP printers, the accuracy printing round holes on a DLP printer, this is uh, basically much more accurate on a DLP printer. We have been finding LCD printers have a problem sometimes with the uh, round holes. And we have been seeing more problems on implant type models that they're either too loose or too tight, okay? Uh, that's why we, aren't, we, we don't like to use LCD printers for uh, uh, basically for implant models. What we want is we want an accuracy. So when we put our parts in there to measure, you know, for example, on the left five millimeter, on the right 10 millimeter, we would like to have 10 millimeters, you know, sometimes 9.98 or 10.0203. That's what the tolerance we are looking for. If we have this, we are very, very happy, very satisfied. If you have an LCD printer, you know, after every 10 prints, you have to print a cubic like this and check if your printer is still 10 millimeters because you don't know when you have to replace the LCD board. Now comes the game changer. You know, you've seen all these problems and many of you have printers, you have the same experience like me. You all will, you hate this. You, it's like, ah, you know. So the game changers in our laboratory, you can see here, I'm in this room now here. Behind me, you can see the this printer, the APT400. Here we have two Asiga printers, 4K printers. We have the TwinSmile DLP printer. We have a small Asiga DLP printer. We have the iDite uh, 100 DLP printer. And here two Acuretta uh, uh, LCD printers, okay? And uh, we print now 
about 1,500 prints. That was in November of 23. We started in 2017. We, we were printing 35 models a month. 2023, we print now 1,500 prints a month. Okay, and uh, this has really gone up. Incredible, it, and it's it's becoming more and more and more. We know. I explained that to you before. From underneath printing, projecting from underneath. Now, the idea was let's change this. Let's not print from underneath. Let's print from top. So I call this top-down printing. Okay, the projector projects from top, and your object goes down into the liquid. So we have no more any of those plastic parts. We have nothing sticking to our uh, base underneath. Okay, uh, no foils which we need. Uh, no holes in the foils, uh, no cleaning of materials needed. All this is gone because we project from top. OK, and we have a look at this. How does this work? Here is basically the situation that we have uh, the printer working. And you see the projector from top projects this image onto the resin. A wiper wipes. A layer of resin away, only a few microns stay over, and then it projects the next layer onto it. So we don't have any pull forces like we used to have, you know, uh, with the other printers, and we are much, much more secure. So the APD L400 is a pure model printer, okay? That's all what it does. It only prints models. We don't print any other things, and that's why. Uh, in the lab now, you know, all our models are printed on the APD L400 because the accuracy is good, uh, the quality is good, and the reliability. Because, you know, when you print like you see here, uh, I don't know if you can see it on the screen here, this here is what you see down there, 42 models at one shot. That's, that's quite a bit of models, and it has to always work. We don't have time to, uh, you know, to play around, okay? So, G2 box, we place the models and the L400 uh, prints it. Now, the thing is, on the L APD L400, we put into the machine about 15 liters of resin. Now, many of you say, oh my gosh, 15 liters of resin. The thing is, you put it into the machine and you just fill it up once. And then you just only add small amounts. So you don't have to have so many bottles standing around in our laboratory. We have many, used to have many bottles standing around. You have to put always a little bit liquid. Here you put 15 liters and the machine will always mix the liquid. You know, it pumps the liquid from one tank into the, into the, uh, where the models have to be printed. So it automatically does everything. So you don't really run out of liquid because when the liquid gets lower, it'll let you know before you print that you have to add some more liquid. Okay. So the first initial amount of liquid sounds as a lot, but basically it's not really because you're not, you don't use 15 liters of a one print, okay? So the printers are bigger, gives you the freedom of a bigger printing platform, okay? This is what I showed you before, you know? Because 80% of the printed objects which we have in a laboratory are printed models. That's why, you know, we say for models, we only use this machine here, the APDL 400. For other things, we have as a backup, the small DLP print 100 from iDive. That does, that does the job for printing something small, a temporary or whatever. That's fine or a thing. But the majority are models and it's becoming more and more and more. Okay. The printer can't run out of resin while you're printing. Okay. Because like I said, you put, you know, uh, enough resin into the, uh, base, it fills up the tank inside, and on the right hand side, you see that red dot that's a laser measuring the height of the resin, and uh, it'll basically auto fills it and will tell you if there's not enough resin that you would have to add to it. The prints are not working against gravity, so they stay attached to the blind build platform. You know, up till now, the, the objects are hanging, okay. And so gravity tries to pull them down. And that's why sometimes objects break off, like you see on the right-hand side. They don't hold on the platform, they fall off. Here, 
the objects are sitting on the platform, okay? So there's no pull forces. That's why the surfaces are so smooth, okay? The, sm the surfaces are really fantastic. Then the top-down machines have less consumables. So we don't have any of these vats like you see here. You know, a Sega printer has those vats which you have to always replace, you, you know, from time to time. They, are, they get quite expensive because they have a chip on the back. You know, you have to pay for each print which you do. Other companies, you know, sell the foils. The foils have to be changed. It takes time. Somebody has to unscrew the, the metal frame, put a new foil into it and start printing. So these are the situations which, uh, you know, makes printing a little more difficult. I would say it's not, not a big problem, but it's more difficult and more expensive. It makes everything expensive, okay? That's why we need something to produce the models nearly at the price of a gypsum model, low cost produ production of models, okay? Re reduce troubleshooting and get more reliability. This, we really want to have this, you know, have reliable models, not models breaking, not printing because of the shape and all that. Basically, it should be working day for day for day because it's like, you know, sure, you can make a mistake also on gypsum uh, impression. You can have a small uh, bubble in your gypsum. You know, you can also make mistakes. Here you can also make mistakes, but we want more reliability. That's why I say top-down printing gives us the reliability which we want. Then we have auto-mixing function in this printer. The printer, you can hit the button and it basically auto-mixes your resin, okay? It mixes it up, it cleans it up, and basically you're ready to print. We don't have this on these type of printers, you know, day one, day six, you see, you take them out, you have to filter them. That is not good. With the printer, top-down printer, you can see we have this function, mixing duration, you can say how long you want it to mix, and basically the printer will mix the liquid before it starts printing. And anything which breaks off of the printer during the printing process, any parts fall off, I think, they fall into the liquid and they sink to the bottom. And then from time to time, you can just basically open, there's a valve, you open that valve and you take, you drain out all the parts, everything which is uh, ugly or dirty or whatever you want, you can filter it out. So you don't have to worry, you know, you can do that maybe every two months or three months. You don't have to worry, okay? That's the nice thing. Uh, with the other printers, we always have to do all kind of cleaning processes. You know, in between prints, we have to cure the, platform to get rid of any debris. It's faster to remove a print and start printing again. It's very easy uh, because the way we print, basically, you know, we can print, like here I print the dragon and you can see the dragon, you know, I can just go and you push it off the thing. And very, very easy. We need much less supports because we don't need, uh, we can see this dragon, we print it directly on that platform, okay? And, uh, so this is really, really amazing, uh, printing like this, a dragon. And, uh, you know, this is, I don't know if you can see this here, the dragon, uh, I'll show you afterwards, okay. Then improved operational efficiency. You don't need to change the VAT. This is no more necessary. These steps are not needed anymore because there is no tank like you see here, okay? Uh, lower support. You know, printing models like this, we don't use any supports. These models, like you see on 3 Box, have no supports. They print direct to the platform and uh, very easy. You take them off, you clean them, you process them, and you start thermoforming for your aligners or what you want to do. So if you're doing a lots of aligners, this printer is the answer. Low cost production, low cost maintenance, and very reliable. Yeah, the quality of the surface is exceptional. You know, if you look at the surface, you hardly see any fine lines. The surface looks like gypsum models. You know, all the details are given. Everything is here on the surface. For me, the conclusion of this is, you know, top-down, say, bottom-up resin 3D printers offer advantage in terms of initial costs. So like the LCD printers are much cheaper to start, you know. Top-down printers are much more you have lots of benefits, you know, they're much more efficient, you can print larger objects, uh, low cost maintenance, ideal for dental laboratory, especially those who want to print models, okay? 
And uh, since we have this, this is a whole new technology. I mean, IDAT is the only company worldwide in the dental field which is now offering this 3D top-down printer. And you are, like I said, it's only for models, okay? But it is fantastic for models if you are doing a lot of model. And I will guarantee you, all of you which are looking here, sooner or later you will get a lot of intraoral scans. The market is getting flooded with cameras. Dentists don't want to pay for alginates, for impression materials, impregums. They buy an intraoral scanner and then you have to start printing. Whatever country you are in, let me tell you, it'll happen everywhere in the world. The camera prices are really coming down. I think end of the, in a few, you know, maybe even in a year, you will see cameras, intro scanners for about $5,000 on the market. The prices are really, really dropping dramatically. So decision, decision for you is, you know, if you're doing 3D printing, you should make a cost benefit analyze and see, you know, do I want something cheap? Do I want something fast? And do I want, or do I want quality? And it's finding the right balance. So the printer, which we have here, the big one, initial cost is maybe a little bit more expensive, but uh, you know, it is really, really, uh, it's worth it. So let me see if I can show you something here. One second, let me switch. Uh, I'll get off my thing here, of my sharing. Um, let me get off here. Let me close this. 3D printing. Yeah, let me close this. Stop sharing. And let me change the camera. Let me see if I can do that. I go to the Logitech camera here. It's this one here. Uh, and just want to give you an idea how this works. Okay, I've taken the camera off. I will go to the... Let me see if I can... Oh, oh shit. One of the Buddhas just fell down. Oh no. <laughs> Let me just uh take care. <laughs> this this one this one just fell down and I broke his arm off. Ah, but doesn't matter. Sorry for him. <laughs> we can print it again. That's the advantage. We have the STL file, okay? So no problem. Uh, but let me go to the printer here to give you a few ideas, you know. This is the, the screen of the printer. And basically what you do is, you know, you put your data onto the LCD or through the network, you send it over. I've got it here now on a, on a USB stick. I put the USB. Uh, hello, Vanik. Yes? So, sorry, the picture is not so clear. Is, you um, don't see the picture? Um, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, the resolution is very low. Oh, I wonder why. Let can, me can you check? Let me see, uh, because I've got it here, Logitech Stream Cam. Uh, hmm. Is it camera issue or? Huh? It's, it's, I'm, I'm camera. Look, let me just go back to my uh, FaceTime camera. Let's see if I can use this one here. Uh, I'll use the computer. I've got the computer now in the air. You see this one? You see this? Still not so okay, clear. Not not clear? How about other customers? I run through it. Can you, Do you see it see clearly? The, this is the problem. This is the problem of movement. But it's okay. We can we can see what we want to see. Uh, but I take the, the, the possibility to, to ask one question, Vanik. You okay. told us send the data through the network. Is it possible or just only by, by the USB stick? No, no it, it is possible. You can do it through the network. Uh, but we have not set it up to the network as yet. Uh, when I was at IDITE, uh, we were uh, doing it through the through the network. They, you know, they set it up through a network. That's no problem. True. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's that was no problem. That's no problem. That's that's easy. Uh, my information was that it is not possible through the network. It's only USB. No, 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 no. We did okay. it at IDITE in the R and D department because that was my first question. And we did it over there. It goes over uh, what TC. I don't know. Special connection. They had set it up there. The okay. the the thing is, I prefer to do it over the USB. I'm really safe because I have to go to the printer anyhow. And this way, I can see if there's anything uh, on the printer, anything left there. If there's any, you know, for me, I have to go to the printer to first check before I print, because 
I, on some of the other printers, we can print over the network. And then what happened was, uh, you know, you had an object still, it started printing with objects still left on it and was a big mess. So we, we that's why we, I prefer, it, it forces me to go to the printer and check if everything is okay on the printer. Because, you know, when you print 40 models at a time and you make a mistake, it's, uh, it's too time consuming to again start and everything. That's, that's the main thing. But I would, I would, I would go with the USB. Okay, so, uh, so since we don't see this very good, uh, I'm not going to, you know, talk about this, uh, you know, the printer. Maybe, uh, we, maybe we should just go directly into uh, questions before you do the video afterwards, uh, Robin. Huh? Okay, now, uh, thank you. Thank you, Vanik, for, for the wonderful presentation and sharing. Uh, you know, after I see your presentation, I'm sure you prepared a lot. I saw a lot of animation made by yourself. Yeah. Very impress impressive and big respect. Yeah, that and printing animation, you know, from underneath. Uh, it, I think it took me nearly nearly two days to make it because wow. I, I don't have that much of experience in that thing. So I was, <laughs> uh, you know, sitting there trying mistake trying mistake trying mistake oh it was a nightmare it was a nightmare you know here just a few things you know this is uh, you see this uh, buddha which looks very professional down. this is and this, this broke down easier, ah. easier, easier to sorry print. for him <laughs> it's easier to print than to work with the pc for you yes <laughs> here uh you know the dragon which you which we printed which you saw before or here now we've printed a snake, a viper snake. And look at these parts, you know, I don't know if you can see it here in your screen, you know, how how smooth they are. And then and now we, we printed like two eyes and, you know, with another printer and we stuck it in here. So, uh, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. The guys in the laboratory are printing, you know, here they print a Buddha, uh, they print everything. They, you know, so it's, it's you can print basically everything. Now, the guy who printed this one, he will not be happy when I tell him he has to print it again. Because I see it's very, very heavy. He didn't hollow it out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Anik. You know, also, uh, as an uh, editor member, I, you know, I want to see more about how we develop this, this printer. Now, I've seen uh, this printer development history, you know, from market research project approval to the market validation. It took our three, four years, and we have 20 best edit, best edit research staffs fully participated in this project. And they work day and night, uh, even, you know, even for the resin, just because of the special thinking structure. Uh, even the resin development took them almost half a year to achieve the best strings and the hardness. Uh, that's why the resin can match the printer perfectly to achieve the high resolution, you know, 30, 30 microns and 89% uh, matching rate. And uh, so I would like to, to, to thank you for, for our team's work, R&D work. And uh, again, uh, Vanik, thank you for your presentation. And uh, speak of the marketing validation. You know, Excuse me. Yes. Uh, I have a question about the shrinking factor. How long is the, the model, the printed model stable? What's your experience? Okay, what what we do is usually uh, when we print a model, we work on these printed models. You know, maybe in the next few days, uh, because our due dates are usually one week or something like that. You know, when the you know cases come in, but we do uh, we print a lots of orthodontic models. You know, study models, and if we get the case back, like say after four weeks. We will not do an orthodontic appliance on that model after four weeks. We will reprint that model and do it then. Because uh, my feeling is really, I've been seeing on all the resins, if they're standing in, if there's sunlight, you don't know how they're stored, you know, they will always keep on post curing, post curing, and they will change a little bit accuracy. Nobody talks about this issue worldwide. That's why, you know, I say, we don't have really have a problem in the lab because usually you just keep on working, you know, you know, during a week. But after, you know, maybe a month or so, I would say uh, there could be a problem. Okay. 
Thank you. The second question, excuse me that I, I asked because I Perfect. Uh, the second question is what is the re uh, recommended temperature for the printing room? Uh, for me, it's difficult. We are now I'm um, short sleeve. Uh, what I think now it's maybe 20 degrees in this room, 21 degrees. Uh, uh, you know, it's just room temperature. Standard room temp temperature. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Thank you. And thank uh, you for your question. Let me show you something. One second. One second. One second. If you know, theoretically, I bought this on AliExpress. This is a heater. If you would have a room which is too uh, hot or, or too cold, you can just put this uh, with the USB. You can put the temperature in here. You can get two, three of them. They are 20 bucks, and you can heat the chamber and stabilize the chamber. Uh, but you know, now it's temperature is okay. Okay, Vanik, another question from my side, then I shut up. Um, uh, <laughs> what's the, the best uh, post-processing process for this uh, printer? You told us to show us a better solution than the washing machine and so on. Exactly. So the way, uh, I can't take my thing off here. What we, the way we have done it is, uh, it's, pretty, uh, it's, in, it's in the other room, I can't go with the camera over there. What we have purchased is like a, a chamber about this big with a brush and the liquid keeps and we put the isopropanol liquid in there. So it's like it's for cleaning motorcycle parts. OK, for small motorcycle parts, the isopropanol always comes out of the brush. So we okay. clean we, after printing. We go in with the whole platform. We just wash it with alcohol in there. And then the majority of the thing has fallen off the resin. And then we put in the ultrasonic for four minutes or what the manufacturer recommends. And then after that, basically it's clean and then we dry it and then we post process it with the light. And uh, it depends again on the resins you use, how long you post process it. Iodide has, like, it's looked like a microwave, okay? Their uh, post processing machine is very nice, got a turntable. The light is very, very, very strong, okay? Inside there, very powerful uh, because I, by mistake, one of my models was touching the light and the, it started to burn the model. So the light was very, very powerful. Uh, so it's a very nice uh, unit there. So that's the way how we post process, okay? We try to get the resin, majority resin fast off. Ultrasonic, they have big 30 liter ultrasonic. We throw it inside there and we post process it. Thank you. Okay, uh, so next step is uh, we will show you some other reference videos from our customer, you know, uh, just for uh, market validation. We, we not only send Vanik this printer to test, also for Korea, for Belgium, also for the US. So let's see what is the feedback from Korea about this printer. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this gentleman is called uh, Park Joymin, and he's from Korea, and a bach uh, bachelor, uh, bachelor of dental technology, and uh, graduate from Shinhan University. Sorry, it's Korea, and <laughs> it's a little bit for, for us to pronounce. And he, he also has a bachelor degree in economics from Kunha University, and studied in, uh, also studied in Master House in Fra uh, Frankfurt, Germany. So it's uh, he owns a live estate. Hello everyone. Today I explain this edit company made by edit company to this new machine. If the air 400 is cut down, so the don't see anything. I explain okay, not working. So the video is this is the video is stuck in here, Robin. Okay. Just one minute. Just one minute. Just one moment. How about now? No. Can you see the screen? No. Now? 
Yeah. Can I hear the, the sound? L4 hundred is top down 3D printer. I frame the printer. This uh, first two. This printer establishes this type. This printer, this CPU, this printing room, and printing resin storage. This. This print type is top down printer. Top down print is this. this Printing plate and down of down of after scraper this resin the removed the resin. This print accuracy is 30 micron, 35 micro 3D printer, 3D printer very 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 accuracy this printing print printer and the print plate is very spread and one one time printing print printing this model is just 20 and 25 models one time printer. This printer is very accurate and many, many make up, make up by model. And this print and model is, look at this. I don't look and layer. This, remove the layer. This, say, same the Pressing, pressing model. And today is AP L four hundred. It is very good printer. Thank you. Uh, uh, can you hear? Uh, Vanny, can you hear the, the sound? I can hear the sound. Yeah. Okay, one moment. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh. So Yes, uh, next is the uh, UCLA, one of the top 10 ranked dental university in the world, and uh, we have been strategic partnerships with, with them. You can see they are also, also using this 3D printer in the university. Also for Bilkum, uh, I will, just for for time, I will not show here. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so next, I will show the the special policy you know, for this printer for for today's customer. Mm. So for this printer, you know, uh, as Maddie mentioned, it's, mo it's only for model. So the customer should be a big milling center or a big labs. So we don't sell this printer. We we give this printer free free usage, and also to guarantee the installation and surface, we provide door to door installation and training surface freely. So. Uh, in, for Europe, for Asia market, we we are send our engineer to your to your place to do the to do the surface and to guarantee the usage. And for details, you can ask ask your sales manager; they are ready to answer all of your questions. And uh, I think this is our policy. So. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Now is the last uh, last step, the Q and A session. So you can you can you can put your hands up, or you can just uh, you can just say your question here, or you just write your question in the conversation section, and we will answer now. And also, I also invite our R and R and D staff. Uh, man manager to hear. He can also answer. He will answer the question with Vanik together. So, so I start because I have to leave. Sorry for that. Ah, Thank you, Vanik, yeah. for the great presentation. Uh, you. Everything clear now. I will take the contact to you in the next days. My decision is clear. I will take the the machine to my lab. Thank you. Wow. 
Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Mm. Okay, so I just saw some question from the conversation section. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, the first is how many models can the printer print at one time maximum? Yes, uh, you know, like I was showing you before, you know, like for example, aligner models, you know, like these are models for aligners. I've printed here 42 models at once, okay? So 42 of them, but you you can't say you can always do that because some models are thicker, you know, bigger. So yeah, basically, right. uh, you know, I would say it depends on the size, how you want, how you place them, how you print them. But uh, it is a printer which prints the most models. You know, <laughs> it it all depends on the size. If you have a big model, it only prints one. A small model, it prints uh, 50. You know, so. Uh, what we can say it's a platform size and the platform size is the one of the biggest in the dental in the DLP field. Okay, so that's the okay. answer. I hope it is answer the customer's question and the next uh, the question from uh, Miguel. And if we consider a five micron resolution, what is a print in millimeter per hour? With 50 microns? Yes. 50 microns? 50 uh, microns. Uh, I think we are around... Print, has, uh, print speed. Mm. I think we are, are... I think it's around 40... I have to look at about 40 millimeters per hour with 50 microns, you know? I think it's... That's 35 to 40 millimeters, about three, to, three and a half to four centimeters and 50 microns. Uh, it depends... Uh, I think you can even go a uh, higher, uh, faster. It depends on how you do your setting in G2Box, but it's one of the fastest printers. Uh, yeah, it's compared to like an Asiga 4K, very similar. Okay. Thanks. And another question is, is for sales. I can answer now. Uh, do you have a reseller in Scandinavia? Uh, Yes, we have, but uh, now uh, I, I will check with Ellen. Ellen is responsible sales manager. She will contact you. Tori? Mm. Ah, uh, next question from, sorry, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce the, the name. Uh, <laughs> what is the main attraction of this printer? I mean, the best advantage compared to com competitors okay the main first of, first of, first of <laughs> okay. all there's no competitor there's no printer like this on the market okay this is the only one which is printing top down in the dental field so normally we have to compare apples with apples and not apples with pears okay so this is a little bit difficult but uh, what we can really say it's uh, the biggest advantage against conventional printing is naturally the cost because the all the parts which you would uh, use, you know, like the vats, the films, uh, the filters, the cleaning, reliability, all that, these are all advantages, okay? So it's it's full of advantages at the moment. Uh, if you would say, what is the disadvantage? I, I think it's the weight, okay? <laughs> it's, okay? It's very heavy, so we had to roll it into the room, okay? The other printers I can lift and put it on, uh, on the table. Here it comes on wheels. Okay. Uh, so it's very stable it's very big it's uh so the first time when i got it, it was like oh my gosh what did we get here it's so big and now it's okay it's sitting behind me it's steady it's fine it's we don't have to move it okay so uh, but advanced mm -hmm. printing it's only advantages against all other printers i don't know any disadvantage at the moment okay i have one question yes Marcy. I uh do you print uh, uh more accurate small models not only big models for aligners for example implantology with with, mm -hmm. with some little parts as yeah. we saw there are holes in the tank and of course you need to uh to to put it in the slicer uh, program in the special place not in the hole and how it works Okay, you mean like, uh, you know, implant models with the holes for the analogs? 
those kind of things, you know, or uh, yeah, we that's that's what that's why we like it. It's it's perfect for printing that. Okay, or you know, with the other systems, we used to have. Or maybe you still know that when you do the other printing method, you have to make a hole in the model because of the suction, you know, uh, for the air and all that. We don't have to do all those things anymore because there's no, no this uh, pull forces. So the analogs, which we print, and that was very interesting here. They fitted from start, okay? We took our models, we put it on here, and we could print, and they were fitting very nicely. With uh, Otherwise, with some of the other printers, you have to do some adjustments on ExoCAD or on TreeShape that you can get them fitting. Here, it just came out, uh, you know. Put that, like, uh, like on the zero, no tolerance, zero from the exocat. You didn't uh, add or uh, remove uh, tolerance uh, with microns. It's like you start from the I zero. Can, I can really hear you. Your, uh, well, let's see if I can make you a little yes. bit louder. Uh, my, your sound is not so clear. Uh, your sound is very, I can hardly understand what you're saying. And now? It's very, uh, you know, it's like very difficult to understand. Oh. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> computers. Maybe sorry. you can see, see it a little bit loudly. Let, let's, let's, yeah. Okay, I will check in the, uh, here maybe. I don't know. But let's try to figure it out what you're trying to say. We, we, we'll, just say it, then we, I'll try to see if I understand it. Uh, the accuracy from ExoCAD, did you change it or you print like zero? Yeah. Uh, we took the settings. I don't know what the settings. We took the same settings we had on the Asiga 4K. Okay. We didn't change anything. And so that was for us because the Asiga 4K is for me like the the golden standard okay and and so we just took those so i don't know exactly what the settings is i have to ask them uh, because I, I have a Siga also 4k and uh, also i have uh, uh, a apd <laughs> but it's not unpacked <laughs> so i must prepare for 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 printing and that, that's what i asked for Okay, okay. I, I can uh, ask them afterwards what they have the settings and I can let you give, pass it on to Robin. Did you try with different resin or only IB resin? Yes, we have uh, tried uh, some other resin, but let me tell you it or you have to you have to play around with the times, okay? In Tutu box you have to change the settings and then you have to do the compensation for shrinkage. So it's like try and error, try and error to get close to it. And uh, we're getting close. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm like the one man show trying and doing. At IDIT they have maybe, I don't know, 20 with how many engineers. Uh, so for them, it's like, okay, it's easy for them. And for me, it's like, okay, 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 okay. You know, it's like. Yeah, I, I know this because I did this a lot uh, with Asiga. <laughs> And uh, I finished with Asiga resin also on Asiga printers. So that's what I... You exactly know what I'm saying. It's like, uh, right. it's, right. you know, if, if you would not work in the lab and you have enough time, three weeks, you can get the perfect settings because you could play around the whole day. And but that's we exactly... Don't have time for it. We don't have time for we it. We don't have time. And that's why people, you know, many people uh, don't understand. Because if you understand how printing works, it's exactly your answer. We don't have time to fiddle around. Okay, it's not yeah. so hundred okay. percent. Other, other, other question. Because as we know, this this technology from APD as uh, uh, with wiper. You have wiper there. We are using the swiper. Yes. Yeah, wiper. And uh, how many times you change the wiper? Uh, we have now the printer about nearly six months. Uh, we have never changed it. I don't know. I can't tell you. You know, maybe ask me in a year. And if you okay. still not change it, then you have to ask me in two years. <laughs> so we, we don't know as yet uh, when this wiper, if it's necessary to change it, when it'll be changed. Maybe, Robin, you, maybe you can answer, yeah, yeah. or your engineer can answer the question. Uh, uh, yes, yes, Martin. I just asked, no, no need to change the wiper. So it can work forever. It's not a consumption. It's not a consumables. Okay, and the 
calibration because of the vibration in the room, you need a special surface for it, right? No, no. It's on our flat floor. The the most important thing is to have it leveled, you know. Yeah, but your floor is uh, uh, what what kind of floor you have? It's, it's just a concrete. I mean, it's concrete with a thing on it, like a uh, you know some. I think, plastic. I think this is this is very important in this kind of printers. The, the thing is, the whole secret of this printer is have it in the right position, you know, that you have it leveled. And they have these parts when you get the printer with the screws to adjust it. And so for us, it took us, you know, a little bit time to get this adjusted. But like Robin said, they will send the engineer uh, because once it's adjusted, that's it. Then it's uh, you don't have to worry. You know, if we would have to put it on a truck and take it to another laboratory, then I think we have to readjust it and try and move. But once it's standing somewhere, I think, sure, you know, like if you say if it's a wooden floor, you know, old house, yeah. maybe it'll, it'll bend, you know, that can happen. But we, I think we, we know what I'm trying to say is once flat floor, everything is right, then we don't have a problem. Okay, understand. The, 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 that is very, this is the most critical thing with this printer is having it level because of the wiper and everything. Once that's done, it's over. Then everything is fine. That's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Martin, for a question. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, when you, can you check the, the dialogue from the conversation section? Let me just see. Okay. Your conversation. Oh, yeah, I got here. I found it now. Uh, there, uh, uh, is it inconvenient to switch between different resins? That was one question. Uh, the thing is, what would the reason be to switch between different resins? Would be if you want to print different types of uh, appliances. But if you print models, basically, you don't want to switch between uh, resins. You have one resin, your customers get used to it, and they always think it's good. If you once change the resin, they say, oh, nothing is fitting anymore. Uh, no, no, no. Why have you changed it? They find all kinds of, even though it's no problem, but it's like, don't change anything if the customer is satisfied. If the dentist is satisfied, it's like gypsum models. You know, maybe using, I don't know, gray models. Suddenly you change it to a pink model. They say, oh, nothing is fitting anymore. Uh, <laughs> you know, so that's why don't change uh, resins, uh, you know, between, don't, don't do that. Uh, try to stick to one resin, one resin color, and that's it. You know, we are uh, basically we are using this uh, orangish color, this yellowish orangish color, because uh, the gray color resin it looks a little bit dirty. Okay, for me, uh, the gray color people like it. You as technicians, we as technicians like it, but we ask patients. We said, which color resin do you? When we show them, they like this yellow and orangish color. It's the, it's friendly for them. Okay, it doesn't look dirty. Because when the dentist shows the crown on the model, uh, it looks nicer on the orange model. Something which I would not use is a, like a whitish color for working on. You don't see any surface structure, nothing. Okay. Then let me go to the next yeah. question. Yes. Uh, you missed one, one question. Can, you, can yes. I can ask a question? Yes. Uh, this is Adam Dean from Medical Palace, Saudi Arabia. Uh, thank you so much for your much information today. Uh, we really appreciate your uh, new printer. Uh, I think it's very effective for mass production for models for aligner. Uh, this will be a good choice for us. Uh, for mass productions of aligners, it will be, will be a good uh, one. But uh, can I ask a question regarding if, uh, for example, this one takes 24 uh, models. Uh, if we can go for a little amount of models uh, regarding four or five models on the plate, uh, it will take the same time with a slicer uh, uh, f uh, 50. It will be the same time. It will be or will be different. No, it's always the same time because it's one projection. It has woof, one picture. It cures it, wipes it. So if you put one yes. model or 40 models, it's the same time. As the size of the plate, it will be different. We can we have different type of plates? As you know, uh, for the ordinary one DLB, we have now aluminum and uh, uh, stainless steel uh, for speed. 
to increase the speed. Uh, is there a difference between uh, will it change the speed? If you let's say you don't have so many mods, you want to print fast, then you put them flat, and you put them flat on the thing. The print flat, type yes. slow, then it's very fast. Okay, uh, yes. like you can also naturally adjust uh, in future uh, the, the the microns because I think for a line of models, hundred to hundred fifty microns is good enough. Invisalign prints with about between 150 and 200 microns. That's why you okay. see on the Invisalign models all those fine lines, okay? Yes. Uh, that's why when the thermoform it, you get those lines in the aligners. And has nothing to do with fitting. It's just uh, the, the gap between it, okay? It has nothing to do with fitting. So if you have a lots of aligners, you know, I would uh, consider 100 microns, 150 microns. Then your speed is naturally down to 20 minutes or 25 minutes. Okay, the, I think IDIT is uh, to launch it. I think they've put 50 microns to make it look beautiful, to look it perfect. But yes. our need is, you know, we think a little bit different in the laboratory. We say we need accuracy, but we need speed. And then I will go up with the microns. Okay. Great, great. This yeah. will be a good solution. Uh, thank you so much for your information. I uh, appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. But uh, we switch resins when we print uh, casting resins and model resins. Okay. Can we ask a question? Yep. Yes, sir, but please uh, give me some recommendation for printing brow and bridges. I didn't get that question. Uh, 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 can you can you give me some re recommendation for printing brow and bridges okay this printer is not made for crown and bridges okay uh, because you would have to put in 15 liters of resin in there and then you could uh, print crown and bridge then you put one crown and bridge and then you have to drain the resin again 15 liters okay so for that you have the small printers uh, you know, for casting or for temporaries and all those kind of things. So that's why uh, if you have a small laboratory and you don't have so many models to print and you want to print different things, then you would, I would consider the CPD 100, not this one, because uh, there you can change the, 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 the tanks where you have the resin inside it. This one is just is recommended as a model printer, okay, for 80% of your work. So if you say, no, I don't have so much, then this is the wrong printer because this is only for models, okay? So, and, and I, really, I want to be objective because uh, people think oh, I can print everything in it. Sure, you can print everything, but you're not going to clean it every time. You know, it's not fair to say you can do it uh, because people say, yeah, you can do it, but no. Uh, it's 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 not worth it. Did answer yes, the question. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor. Yeah. Uh, regarding the last thing, you said we can print anything other than a model. If I can too much have two machines, one for model and one for aligner, could be. Yes. Uh, basically, once you. You could have one machine, you know, you put 15 liters of aligner liquid or whatever you want to into it, but then you have to get the settings. The IDIT R&D department has to know, has to have the resin which you want. They could do the settings for you, you know, and then you can actually do that. that that's no problem. It's all a question of getting the settings for that resin type which you want to print. Great. The, uh, if I want to change the remaining, there is no remaining for the resin. What do you mean no remaining? Uh, sometimes we uh, in the ordinary printing. Sometimes we have residue uh, of the old of the old printing. I have to clean the tank. Ah no no uh, for, for no no. What happens is you have to imagine the tank goes like down. You know the tank. It's it's first 15 liters and it goes down like this. So anything which falls off residue sinks to the bottom underneath. You know really far down. So okay. there's nothing nothing up there. And then from time to time, there's like a valve you can open underneath and that just falls out. So you don't have to clean. You know, you will clean maybe every two months or I don't know. We have not cleaned now the machine for three months now. 
Uh, regarding the changing the amount of the liquid for 15 liters, uh, I, I will increase if it is go for minimum less than, uh, for example, 10, I have to increase it directly? The, 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 the printer does it. You, there's a button you can also press and it pumps it from one tank to the other. That, like there's a tank in there and it pumps okay. it into your thing. You don't have Speak. to do, yeah. It shows Speak. you, in says like our printer says now, uh, uh, we are at, 28.5 percent uh, uh -huh. of liquid so now uh -huh. you know when it goes down i think to 17 or 18 percent it then pumps more into it okay great 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 thank you so much thank you it's really i must say it's it's made for the dental field now for models uh i really like it for this purpose you know first when i got it i was thinking do i really need a printer only for models and now, because it's so reliable, everybody only wants to use it for models. You know, in our laboratory, everybody's fighting for this printer now. They say, hey, can I put my stuff on? You know, uh, so it's, it's really working a lot, a lot. Every day, it's printing, 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 printing. And that's why I can't tell you, you know, how reliable it is, because we only have it six months. You know, if you say, well, what is your experience long time? You know, ask me in one year. Then I can say, yeah, ask me in two years. You know, it's it's one of the first printers which which came on the market, with, which they sent to us from iDite. And now, you know, with us using it, giving them a lots of feedback from the field, the engineers have started to adapt your, like you, the way you think in your country. I think the same in my country because we're technicians. That feedback has gone to IDAT and they have ad added that to all the new ideas, the new uh, uh, updates, everything that's been put into it. So, because we are all in the same boat, all the technicians, we think same, okay? So, but the, and the IDAT engineers are listening. That's the biggest advantage which we have. You know, it's not a big Thank company, <laughs> not big company like uh, Cirona or whatever. You know, you're just a number and nobody listens to you. Here, everybody listens. Thank you, Rani. You're welcome. Let's see. Uh... Uh, you missed one question. Uh, uh, he didn't mention his name. Uh, how do you compare this printer with next and uh, 5100 model? Uh, <laughs> it's a good we, question. We have in our, we, you know, we are now the largest laboratory group in the Switzerland. OK, we have purchased uh, many labs and one of our labs, they have three next end printers. And uh, I told them we have to get rid of them because the next time printers are too expensive in manufacturing cost. The resins are so expensive. The platform is so small. The, the tank where the resin is, those tanks are so expensive. It's incredible, you know. Uh, I think after uh, 20 tanks, you can get a printer like this for that same price, you know, changing those tanks. This. This printer, what I heard, the price is not uh, not so crazy, like many people would think, because it's so big. But uh, it's I personally, I say, next M printer 5100 is a no go. I would not touch it because it's a closed system. You know, as a lab owner, don't buy any printer which is completely blocked. If they don't give you the chance that you can try and modify yourself, don't even think of buying a printer like that. They try to give you the story, yes, but you know, every step is perfectly checked and this and this and this. No, they just want to tie you to their resins. They want that you are forced to use their resins. That's why they have a barcode. You have to hold the bottle there and only then the barcode reads it and then you can start printing because you can only use their resins. That's why be careful. Don't use anything uh, closed system, you know. Uh, this printer is not a closed system. But it needs time to learn if you want to change the, the resin. Uh, I was trying to do that on one of the 5100, which we now have in our other labs. I was trying to open the, the recipe so we can use other resins. And uh, somehow I can't get in. If somebody knows any way, any software to open that, I would be very thankful that we could then use other resins in the 5100 and do our own settings. It's not allowing us to do it at the moment. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Mm. Somebody's asking, what's the maximum height of each uh, layer at the average curing time? I think the average curing time is around 
two seconds, something like between two and three seconds. Is that right from your engineer? Each layer be cured for about two, three seconds? Or one? Uh, each sorry, layer, sorry, the layer, you know, which we cure. Yeah. Uh, is it two yes. or three seconds each layer? Or I thought it was between two and three seconds each layer. Cure. Somebody was asking, what is the. Uh, two, two, around two seconds. Exactly. Around two seconds. That's because when I was playing around, I, that's what I saw. I was trying to change uh, the settings for other resins, and it was about two seconds exactly. Yeah. So each layer is about two seconds, and it depends, you know, uh, what resins you have, how thin they are, uh, you know. Uh, so, yeah. But let's see. Yes. Uh, okay. Does anyone have any question? Some people are uh, asking, you know, the price of the of the printer. Uh, it's like I don't know. It's you have to. I think guests they have to talk to their distributor to their yeah. A customer, yes, we, because we uh, already on the uh, import duties of each country and on and on and on. So I I don't know. Uh, you know, in Switzerland, it's we are good. We are lucky. We only have eight point one percent. You know, the taxes imported. So you know, Germany is I think twenty four percent. So it's it's so difficult or twenty one percent. So difficult to say what the price is. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, an another question. Somebody uh, says if I can print in 150 microns, somebody's asking uh, the engineer, have you already got the settings for 150 microns? Is or are you working on that? What is maximum? Uh, yeah, it's about 20. Yeah, now currently the maximum is 100 microns. Okay. So you have done the 100 yes. setting already, huh? And so it's, we have to just, we also have to try ourselves, go to 150 or 200. We have to try. So you have done, now they have 50 and 100 microns. Uh, yeah, it's another testing, Vanik, for exactly. 100 yeah. microns. Yeah, and then now the next will be then yes. 150. Because I know in China, you don't understand why we want 150, okay? Because you think the yeah. surface has to look smooth, that's why you're only doing 50 microns. But we technicians think different. We want to have 150 microns to be very fast on aligner models, on uh, you know okay. mods for implants. Then we want nice smooth surface. Then we want 50 microns. Okay, uh, so exactly. Ah, uh, okay, for fast delivery. Yeah. Yeah. So it it depends yeah. for what you want to use it, and we have to get the settings for everything. Okay. And, uh, you know, the thing is, I guess I'll do more. I think the whole thing is uh, when uh, if I do lectures in some of these countries, you know, which people are looking from, uh, I think then we should try to organize like a, a day's training with some of the people, uh, because that's where you get all the inside information. You know, when when I work with you when I show you when I do all these things, you know, uh, and then finishing a crown or something with 3D Pro, that's where you get the real inside information that will help you. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Uh, sorry, because of the time issue, uh, we, we we can we can answer one last question and then we finish. Perfect. Is that okay for you, Vanik? You... Perfect. What is the last question? <laughs> yes. One last question. Anyone? Baruch, do you have any question? <laughs> I'm fine, thank I'm you. Fine. Okay. Uh, so when you, uh, our R and D will uh, will write down all the questions and your suggestion, and mm -hmm. we give you feedback. Ah, oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Yes, it was first time yeah. I did this presentation. Now, you know, it took me some time to prepare it to make it understandable. So I hope everybody enjoyed it. And we will yeah. see some more mm. presentations in near future. Huh? Thank you very yes, much. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, oh, for okay. Doing this. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Thank Alex. Thank you. 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 Thank you.